GearNetwork.com. The following is a presentation of the Gear Radio Network. What's up, rockers? This is the rock star Robbie Vegas, professional wrestler and host of the All Bets Are Off podcast. But right now, you're listening to the Fantasy Football Bros podcast. So take it away, Chaz. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Hey, everything on three. Number three. Wait on one. Oh. Wait on three. One, two, three. Hey. You are now listening to the Fantasy Football Bros Podcast. And we're just going to cut off the introduction because we have a serious topic we're talking about. Potato chips at the moment. So, Dave, drop right off the bat what you just said. Listen, all right, my favorite garbage chips of all time are Munchos. It's like two dollars for a gigantic bag. They giant are bag. I'm convinced it's ninety percent salt. It's they Bro, figured out a I way to just crystallize just salt. salt. Yeah, it, yeah, exactly. It's just salt mashed together and you get this crispy, you know, deliciousness of just munchos for, yeah. Yeah, for like two bucks. And, and, and dude, if, I don't know if it's just you guys, it's just me. I feel like that bag lasts forever. I'm like eating money. I'm like, I think I'm out. And then I got like half a bag left. I'm like, what the fuck happened? <laughs> Jay, you're awfully quiet about munchos. What, what is your take? Well, <laughs> they're, they're fine. <laughs> I, I don't hate them. I don't love them. I think there's better. Here's what I know about munchos is they're not a potato chip. If you if you read the bag, it nowhere says potato chip. It says like potato snack or something. And I believe yeah, what, what it is they? is it's made from dehydrated potatoes. So it's made from like instant mashed potatoes. And then they form them and fry them or whatever. I'm pretty sure that's hmm. like the trick. That's it. interesting. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that, that makes that, them better. That's the well, – well, Freeze anyway, actually, side. they're they're made with enriched cornmeal. Yeah, it's something weird, something different. So, if you look, it does not say. I don't believe it says potato chip on the bag. It says potato snack. But as you guys can see, we are joined by the no nickname, no nonsense. It doesn't matter what your name yes, sir. is. Yeah. The champ is here, and What's of up, course, boys? we've got What's up, boys? the man. The myth, the legend, Mr. Jay Coleman, and of course we have the fantasy football surgeon himself. I feel like a surgeon, gentlemen. I've got one thing to say to y'all. It's been a while. You know, it's been it it's been, been. About, about a week and a half, so we're back. We we jumped right in on discussion of potato chips for some reason. So I figured I wanted to get that in on on this episode because, uh, as you know, this is the last episode before the Super Bowl, and we're going to have our predictions and our picks and a couple of best bets, and uh, then we're kind of hitting a content wall for a while. So we're going to discuss some future endeavors as well. But um, how are you guys, Jay? I haven't seen you in a few weeks. How's Life. I'm good. How about you? I'm doing well. And Adam, how you doing? How's Nashville? I'm good, man. Nashville's fantastic. I love it. I'll find out soon. And Dave, looks like you're doing well yes, too. Sir. I see you playing a lot of video games. I'm uh, jumping back on the Sekiro train. I just uh, had had the need to murder some stuff. So yeah. And this is why we haven't vibe. recorded, nice. folks. This is why we haven't recorded. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. <laughs> no, we, we, we tend to go uh, every other week come postseason, even though we didn't make it to the postseason. So um, I don't – so we didn't have an episode last week, but the predictions uh, from before the uh, NFC, AFC Championships games, I was right. You guys were wrong. But none of us were right at the beginning of the season anyway. But you guys all thought Fair. Baltimore was going to make it. And I thought Chiefs were going to make it, so la <laughs> da um, But did anybody have any big wins? Okay, Jay didn't have any big wins. Uh, what about you, Dave? Did you have any big wins? <laughs> what the fuck gamble. was that for? You don't gamble. <laughs> partially a gambling podcast. The only, t- the only um, thing Jay, Jay gambles with is, like, waking up and going to work. Like, that's Jay's gamble right there. <laughs> what I about you, I could gamble at that. <laughs> <laughs> Would you have any big wins, Dave? I had no big wins. I'm going to be honest. I felt like, uh, I felt like the championship rounds were kind of just 
toss ups and I was waning back and forth. And I was like, you know what? I'm just like, I'm out. I'm just not going to lose money. And it, it's a good thing because a lot of the bets that I would have placed would have indeed lost. So I, I took a W on myself and just kept my money in my pocket. And uh, it worked out great for me. Break it even <laughs> is a that is, that is how you win gambling. That's why I always win. That's where Jay always that, you know. yeah, see, Jay, Jay is ahead of all of us. Oh, that's we, 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 no Not betting. Yeah. Uh, what about you? Any big, any big wins for the championship week? Negative, dude. No, no big wins, man. I, you know, my picks obviously didn't come in because I did take Baltimore. Um, so I'm actually, Baltimore. I'm actually on fire. I am on because. If you guys remember, I hit, you know, doubled up my money on Michigan being Alabama. I doubled up my money on Michigan winning the national championship. Right. Yep. And then I, yeah. I, I successfully three in a row because I don't bet on every game. But and I didn't even bet on championship week, guys. And I mean this at home. You guys already know this, but I mean this at home. I had no doubt San Francisco was going to win uh, and beat the Lions. I had no doubt in my mind. You know, after the couple weeks of the playoffs, that the Super Bowl was going to be Brock Purdy against Taylor Swift. I had no doubt in my mind. So, when I didn't make a bet just because I was just kind of lazy, when I saw at halftime that the San Francisco 49ers were down 21 to, was it three, 21 to three at halftime, somewhere around those lines, I went to look at the odds. The odds went San Francisco plus 230. I could not drop a hundred dollar bet on that fast enough, and I won two hundred and thirty dollars because they came storming back to beat the Lions. So, honestly, God, that was my biggest win of the year. That was my biggest win of the year. Plus two hundred thirty. One, you know, that was three hundred thirty dollar win. Well, technically a two hundred thirty dollar win, but you know, I cashed out at uh, three hundred thirty dollars. So, I want to give myself a little, uh, a little. Uh, All I do is win, 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 no matter what. That was a nice yeah. win. It, I'll tell you that much. It is your show. And yeah. the moral of that story is that Chaz is going to take us all out for dinner with his winnings. Yeah. The moral of that story, he, folks. Uh, he is coming down to Nashville, so. <laughs> <laughs> is is uh, follow the NFL narrative, folks, and keep that in mind when we do uh, when we do our bets coming up. Uh, me and at least Jay and Adam, maybe not, uh, maybe not Dave so much. We also want to mention and take a shout out to uh, – uh, music, country music, and real music legend Toby Keith uh, passing away this past week. And whether you like country or not, legend. you got to give him some love. So let's give him one, guys. Absolute legend. Yep, absolute legend for sure. That day in country music, man. That day in music sure. in general. Really I'm not even a country music. Yeah, guy. I, yeah, music in general, man. I mean, he's he's had hit after hit, and just hearing hearing the news, it, it. I mean, it definitely definitely shocked. I think the music industry for sure. It uh, was yeah, absolutely legend, Toby oh, Keith. Too, too soon. <laughs> too, too, wow. Too soon. wow! And we're canceled. Uh, it's dis- been a great the, season, yep. everybody. The, dis- yep. the disrespect, this guy. You know. Oh, I, I have respect. Well, for Toby it's a good Keith. run, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I have respect for Toby Keith's music and stuff. Though, and if you don't, you know, if you want to check it out, Chaz's rock record review. You can check out my late my latest review, which I paid him some homage and, and broke down his first ever greatest hits album. But Dave, real quick, this kind of surprised me. Toby Keith just passed away. What do you think his net worth was while he passed away? Uh, when he passed away, yeah. Um, I would say probably a lot lower than you would think. Maybe twenty mil. Twenty mil. You would be wrong because last checked a few years before he died, he was worth five hundred million dollars. What? <laughs> oh yeah. So, didn't he? Half didn't a he bill. get? In, didn't he? Didn't he get in some trouble? Did he, did he get some uh, money trouble? He just got like some cancelization because he's a, a a right wing guy, and of course, everyone wants to cancel you for your politics. But I think that's the mm. only trouble he ever really faced, other than you know, cancer. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's that's not good. that's a big one. Yeah, yeah. sounds like big, that's a big one. Sounds like the man had sixty two really awesome years, <laughs> right? You know, if you die with five hundred million, he sure did. And you had like thirty eight country hits, man. Cheers to you, Co- Toby Keith. Right, we won't we won't spend the whole episode talking about it. But uh, Toby Keith, rest in peace. Check out Chaz's Rock Record review if you want to see uh, my latest review of one of his uh, greatest hits albums. So, the topic at ham, hand ham. The topic at ham. I'm oh, a little, wow, I'm a little hungry. I'm a little hungry. It's okay. <laughs> it's all that macho talk. 
uh, the Muncho talk. And, and uh, topic at hand, the superb owl. We can't say that SB word because we get sued by the NFL. So the superb owl. Well, Four fifty-eight. What is this? Fifty-seven. Is this fifty-seven? Fifty-eight. Uh, fifty-eight. Yeah, yeah, 58. 58. Superb owl. 58, buddy. Yeah, and remember that there's fifty-seven champions ahead of this. Remember that for later. Um. So you have Brock Purdy. You have brought. You have the San Francisco Purdies and the Kansas City Swifts. You. So you have that going on. And uh, you have, you know, you have the Messiah, Patrick Mahomes, against Tom Brady Jr., Brock Purdy. You have all the Taylor Swift nonsense. There's a lot of stuff going on. I'm excited to see Usher. Usher is one of my favorite uh, artists of all time. Artists in general, top 10 for me in any form of music. I'm a big Usher guy. I seen Usher in concert once. What's up, Goose? Goose went with me. Um, so there's a lot of pageantry around the Super Bowl. And I tell you what, boys. I could not be any less excited for the Super Bowl. I really could not be. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I give zero fucks. I don't yeah. even care. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little watch salty. This is football. I'm a little salty that you that I mean a true Usher fan would have said that your favorite person, your top ten was Ursher. Ursher so Raymond. I just want to throw that out there real quick. Fake fan, but okay. <laughs> yeah, someone live. Get on my level, bro. Um, <laughs> but seriously, I couldn't be any less excited. Dave, where's your excitement level for this? Absolute zero fucks. I get yeah. zero fucks about the <laughs> Super Bowl. I can't I can't get behind it. And I don't know why. I mean, I'm you know, it's football, but it just uh it just feels like when you get a bowl of cereal and like you let it sit there too long and it's like eh, I'll eat it but it like I'm not enjoying this it's like mushy and you know what I'm saying <laughs> you have all the delicious milk I'm del- Joel, let's not even get started on the fucking milk broth all right we already know where you stand dude. on that um I, this is why no. I think it's kind of a slap in the face to all of us I'm not sitting here and saying it's rigged I'm not going to be that guy you can make that decision for yourself at home but I've been saying all year now I didn't pick this Super Bowl but I've been kind of cracking jokes since about the halfway of the point of the season that they desperately want Taylor Swift and Brock Purdy in the Super Bowl so that started off as a joke for me and what is the Super Bowl right now so, like, it's kind of a slap in the face to me who was taking it so lightly as a joke and that this happened. Now, that doesn't mean these teams aren't good. I don't think Kansas City's very good, but they have the magic man at quarterback. And, and, and San Francisco is a great team. So, I mean, whatever. It's not like these teams don't belong. But, like, I don't know. It's just, like, just me making so much fun of this narrative-driven society that this is the Super Bowl <laughs> makes me very uncomfortable. It really does. It makes me so uncomfortable. And it just is like, I'm, and, and I haven't really been excited for a Super Bowl in a while. I barely watch the Super Bowl. I really don't care because by the, you know, I'm a Bills man and a fantasy football player. And come the Super Bowl, get pretty much 100% chance none of those are happening. <laughs> the Bills aren't playing come the Super Bowl, and there's, <laughs> you know, minimal fantasy football. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to make some bets. I don't got no squares. I got none of that stuff. Um, we'll get into our predictions later. Um, it's just about the – so, obviously, all of our excitement levels are are in the tank here. Is anyone not going to watch it? I seriously might play Fortnite instead. I, no, I mean, I'll probably watch, watch some of it, but I don't know if I'm going to watch the whole thing. I probably won't watch it. I'm going to be honest. I mean, I'll check it, but I won't be like attentively paying attention to it. It's going to be more of like an on in the background and I'm going to do some other shit. You know what I mean? At at this point, the NFL seems more scripted and more predictable than the WWE. Right. WWE is actually on fire right now. We'll get to that later. Fair. Uh, That's why I saw it. I don't know. I'm just. I'm just tired of the Chiefs narrative. Oh, I mean, they. I mean, we all saw them play like ass for the whole second half of the season and somehow squeak by. And obviously the Bills couldn't finish them off, which is unfortunate for Bills fans and even casual Bills fans like Dave. Um, but it's just. It worked out fucking great. Know. Yeah, did come, come on <laughs> yeah, and join sure the dark did. side whenever you want, man. Sure did. Um, dark side. I don't know. I, I'm just. I mean, Kansas City was here last year. They beat Philly. Like, now we get Kansas City again. and you know, Fourth time in five years, I believe, four, right? Four years ago in 20, 2020 was 
you know, the, the Chiefs versus the Niners, and now they have Brock Purdy, and it's like, all right, whatever, get over it. So you guys are I'm, tired of the Chiefs narrative, so am I, but I've been tired of this Brock Purdy narrative, and I'm the only one there, so yeah, I can see yeah. you guys all join in my tired of the Brock Purdy narrative by this time next year. It's not so much Brock Purdy. It, it is, it's just really I, – I shouldn't say – I don't know. You you can't deny that Patrick Mahomes is a really good quarterback, right? Like sure, sure. it's just more it's just more so the fact of what the media does to everything. And like I know the media is like that's how the NFL makes money and their TV deals and the, the contracts that they have with that and uh it's just the focus has just been so much on the the Travis Kelsey Taylor Swift thing and Patrick Mahomes just Still getting it done, which is fine. He's a quarterback. He's he should be getting it done for you, right? But I'm just tired of the. I think it's more so the media than anything, and not so much the team itself. And I think that's where I kind of stand with the whole thing. And and I agree, it is Brock Purdy. Oh, Mister Irrelevant. Like, okay, yeah, he was the last pick of the draft. How many oh, times are you going to tell us it, this? How many times? I, I mean, I, I want to see all the prop bets. I haven't even looked into them because I don't care. But I want to know the prop bets on how many times they're going to show Taylor Swift or talk about it, and how many times they're going to tell tell us that Brock Purdy is Mister Irrelevant. I heard of a good prop bet today. One of the prop bets that somebody took today, I heard of the radio, is how many times will Tony Romo say, I don't know about that, Jim. That's one of, <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the prop That's bets. That's funny. That's that, so funny. The, the That's Brock Purdy bad. narrative is getting out of control, and I don't even care. Like The guy's been playing good. You know, I don't hate the guy. And you're right, Adam. It's the media. It's the narrative. I don't know how many times NFL pundits, NFL writers, NFL media, ESPN media, every single person has to say this line. He's not a game manager. You don't know what you're talking about if you think he's a game manager. Richard Sherman. Oh, I, he's not a game manager. He, he's a, he is a great quarterback. He's not a great game manager. I even saw Alex Smith, an NFL analyst, say, me as Mr. Uh, the the designated captain of game manager roles. I'm here to tell you, Brock Purdy is not a game manager. Enough, enough. It really seems like the NFL sent out a memo to everybody saying, "Don't say he's a game manager. Don't don't say it. Don't." Do, 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 I mean, I mean, he's not. He, you better not say it. You better defend him and say he's not a uh, game manager. Uh, they they came back and they beat the shitty Detroit Lions. I'll give them all the credit in the world. They came back and they beat the worst coached team in the league who blows everything, and they blew it. I get it. And Brock Purdy threw the worst fucking pass over Brandon Ayuk's head for Detroit to dive and catch it and bat it up in the air, and Ayuk catch it. Horrible pass. Absolutely awful. Again, bad passes happen. But he's not Tom Brady, and I'm so tired of it. And for the NFL, the NFL media 20 years ago didn't do that for Tom Brady. I don't ever remember 40 people on the media telling me Tom Brady was good. I just remember Tom Brady winning everything and everybody saying that he's a system quarterback. All the media was saying for Tom Brady is he's a system quarterback. And then the dude just unleashes and becomes the greatest quarterback of all time. I, I just I'm so confused. I heard today on the radio on my way home from work that somebody said that Brock Purdy is like Tom Brady Jr. I I almost spit my water out all over my Jeep. And I'm like, are these guys serious? Like, they don't get me him. wrong. Like you said, like you said, he, he has right. been playing well. They went on a three-game losing streak. They came back, won every game after that, made it to the Super Bowl. And just <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm a fucking child. Keep going. <laughs> no, you're fine. But I mean, that was I, just for them to say that 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 Brock Purdy is is Tom Brady Jr. Like, I mean, Dave, he hasn't done nearly anything to compare to Tom Brady in in the right? short time that he's been in the league. Like, Except in a Tom late Brady came man. out here and won a Super Bowl. And you know, Tom Brady year. came in off the in his second year and won a Super Bowl. You know, like. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pose this to let's Dave. Not compare, let's just because, not compare Brock Purdy to to Tom Brady. Right. Give me a but break. I wanna, guys. I'm gonna pose this question to Dave because we're a little older. Maybe you guys remember this, but Tom Brady's breakout, 2001. Yeah, 
So we're about yeah. 15 years old. You know, you guys are a little younger, but you still might remember it. I just, I truly, Dave, I truly remember everybody on ESPN and everybody on sports radio telling how much of a system quarterback he is and how he's not the answer and he's just lucky and he's winning. And then the narrative never changes until he breaks the passing record. Like, why is Brock Purdy, Dave, treated so different? Do you remember that? Am I making that up? No, and I, I do remember that. And I, I, you know, I'm, I don't know. Like, I don't want to be this fucking guy, but I feel like somebody needs to be this guy. And like, like you were talking about, dude, we live in a narrative driven society now. Like we really fucking do. And like, I want to say that like this season has just been like an absolute fucking downer for sports for me for in, in like total. Cause it's like, you know, we every. Every other thing, it's always just like, you have to worry about left wing, right wing, or like where you stand on this issue or like following this, this script, blah, blah, blah. It's like sports was kind of like my last safe haven that I didn't have to fucking deal with hearing any of that bullshit. Like, and now, and, 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 and don't get me wrong. Like the, they've always had narratives to the game, but yes. like the, the narrative, the game always took precedent over the narrative. You know what I mean? Like they had those backstories for those guys, but the game was always the most important thing. And I feel like this year we've really seen that flip where the game is now secondary to the story that they're trying to tell. And I just like, honestly, it sucks. Like it's a sad, it's a sad fucking day. And that's because I, I love sports and I love sports for a lot of reasons, but mostly because it was one of the last true things that we had left where I didn't have to fucking worry about someone's opinion on what side of whatever issues they stand on. And like, now that's fucking bled into the NFL. And like, I'm kind of, I'm kind of done. Like I'm kind of over it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I agree with, with everything you I, said there. That's just how I feel, man. You should yeah. start watching hockey now because it's one of the few sports left that yeah. doesn't do that. It's I mean, really good. Go Sabres. Let's, let's do something. <laughs> let's do something here. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's well, awesome. I mean, but I don't just, know. I mean, maybe so it's just, annoying. Maybe it's just the season, the way that everything kind of shook out with Taylor Swift, and they'll kind of get back to some resemblance of a normal season next year. But like, I don't know, dude. That's why it's like that's what I said, yeah, man. When fantasy, it, fantasy's over. I care about my bets. I'm a casual fan. Like, I don't want to fucking hear shit. Like, if I don't got a stake in the game, I really don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? It's like I don't know. Yeah, I don't. This is the first time in many years that I actually did not buy a Super Bowl square. Yeah, yeah same. I don't have any- and I'm not mad about it. Although it's- watching my numbers would be probably more entertaining than watching this game, but you know, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna watch it just because it's football, and it's the last chance I'm gonna get to watch football until uh, the whatever league starts in. I need March, it. I need a football break. I'm I'm out. I'm so dejected yeah. with the Bills and with the narratives and with Taylor Swift. Like, and I'm not shitting on Taylor Swift. She's wonderful artist. She's awesome. She's there supporting her boyfriend. She's allowed to be there supporting her boyfriend. It's just the NFL. Yeah. It's the nonsense. It's the yeah. NFL nonsense. They, I mean, they, like I said, dude, they always had these stories, but like the game always took precedent. It was always, you know, let's get in the game. Like, all right, we get, you know, there's a fucking timeout. Maybe we mentioned so and so, you know, went to fucking uh, this, you know, this bad thing happened to this so and so. So it's cool to see him. You know what I mean? Like they did that with Stafford, right? Like they, yeah. when, when yeah, Stafford, with, with his like, wife having cancer, yeah, and, with yeah. his wife his having cancer injury, or something like that. that, like, they always they they would like, they would have a narrative. I mean, they mention it like, oh, she battled cancer. Like, what you know, what a great. Can-. But it was never like, it was never like, oh, we're gonna we're gonna pinpoint on Matthew Stafford's wife for the entire game and like yeah, it was, every it time was like Matthew a, Stafford. Yeah, it was like a thirty like, second clip, and they were, and they address it, and then it's over and done with. It's not right. fucking every thirty seconds they're going on a minute. Yeah. Yeah, it's and I think like, I'm getting frustrated too because like now they're just panning to Taylor Swift like in between plays, and it's like, guys, there's a football game being played. Like, not <laughs> to mention she's just being a fan of the game. Like, supporting her boyfriend, leave her the fuck alone. Yeah, like just let her watch the game in peace. You know, like Patrick Mahomes oh. is one of the better quarterbacks in the league. The be- you know one of the best quarterbacks in the league at the moment, and like they didn't give a shit about his wife. I don't, like, no one likes her, so well, she's fucking annoying. But, right, I get that, and I know she's annoying and frustrating sometimes. But like, like, what, 
just because it's Taylor Swift, it's like, you know, she has a life to live too. And like, yeah, she wants to enjoy a game. Like, and, and celebrities go to games all the time. You probably have no idea that they're even there unless they point it out. Yeah. They'll, but they'll point like, it out sometimes, you know, but yeah, it's like a second. Point sometimes out. they will, but you'll get, you'll get, like, you'll get one shout out. Like, Oh, look who's yeah. at the game today. Like, Oh, I, oh yeah. you know, even Roger Goodell, Roger Goodell goes to a lot of the games and they point him out. And it's like, Oh, here's our commissioner, Roger Goodell. Maybe they'll show him two, three times. Right. I, but it's, I feel like it's just constantly being like, Oh, look, Taylor Swift is in the stands. She's cheering for Travis Kelsey catching the ball. Well, Travis Kelsey catches the ball 10 fucking times a game. And now they're just, they just keep panning over and in the, the box and the suite and watch her celebrate. And it's like, not oh only God, that, but now dude, they literally, trying, so. they literally show her from the time she steps off her fucking jet or whatever. Yeah. And then, then they, <laughs> they show her in the bottles of the stadium. stadium. She's yeah. like in the fucking basement, <laughs> yeah. like looking at plumbing and they're like, Oh, Taylor Swift's here on her <laughs> way to her seat. It's yeah. like, it's like, I believe, I believe her jet is called, I believe her jet is called Tay Force One. I just made that up, but that's that's a good one. Tay Force. If her jet's no, not no, called no, that, that Big L, Big L, Tay. Yeah, huge <laughs> L, huge L. Well, now she'll listen to the podcast, and you know, you know. Well, she's a fan. That's why we're going to get canceled. Yeah, for sure. The hey, Swifties are going to cancel us. We've never said anything about. Oh, yeah. about the only bad thing we said. Yeah, about we're not, yeah exactly. Yeah. We're, just, we're, just, we're mad at the NFL and the media, not Taylor Swift and right. Travis Kelsey. The, the only bad thing we say about her is that her boyfriend's kind of getting worshed up. I mean, that's it. He's kind of getting worshed and up. And that's not even that bad. He's old. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he's, he's, old he's, he's allowed old to have his football. league. He's allowed to have yeah, his girl sign at the football game. Yeah, he's in his mid-30s. Yeah, of course. Which he's is like 87. Hey, what, what Take, it easy. The age? Take it easy. Take it easy. Take it. Oh my easy. god! Sorry, I just got us. I got. I just got us triple canceled. Yeah, you're canceled by the host. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where's the mute button on this? That's thing? fine because there ain't gonna be a podcast soon anyway. After <laughs> all right, so let's get. Um, before we get our, um, well, all right. So, I, Dave, did, are you making any bets on it? Are you gonna take any prop bets? Are you gonna do anything? So I have some bets for you guys. I mean, I'm. <sighs> I don't know. Maybe I put them in. Maybe I don't. But I mean, I have some stuff that I'm looking at. But I, I think the biggest thing is like I'm, you know, I'm gonna step back and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put away my hatred for the NFL and try to help the listeners out here. So because I know people are going to be watching this game and are probably gonna be putting some <laughs> sure. dough down. Um, and I will say that um, people during the Super Bowl, I don't know what goes through their head that like all of a sudden they need to start betting on the most fucking ridiculous bullshit. Uh, that you can possibly bet on. But I am here to tell you that the best way to win money on the Super Bowl is to just bet normal fucking shit that you would normally bet uh, if it was just another playoff game. So I, if you're looking for like some crazy 3,500 prop bet where like Travis Kelsey is going to spike a fucking octopus into the goalpost or some shit, <laughs> like I, that's not good. That's not going to be me, but I do have a couple bets that I, I do like for the actual game. Yeah. Well, well, sure. let's talk about our. Should we do our best bets first, or should we do our predictions? Dave, Dave, do your best bets first, but don't give me any prediction. Don't give me any money line or anything. Okay, all right. So, uh, you know what I mean. So just skip those if those are one of your bets. Yeah. So uh, we'll go ahead and start it off. We're going to start it off with the uh, over on yards for Kelsey. Kelsey's over is seventy and a half right now. Um, I like that line. I like that line a lot. Um, playoff games, Kelsey shows up. I think 70 is pretty easy. I also got Kittle over on 49 and a half. I think a lot of people are leaning on Ayuk on this game uh, and Debo, but I, I, it just feels like it's going to be a tight end game. So I like Kittle at 49 and a half. Um, and then I'm taking the running backs. We're taking both running backs. I got Pacheco over 67 and a half and CMC over 89. I think they're... All four of those are safe bets. I think this game is going to come down to the running backs and the tight ends, and I think uh, all four of those are going to cash pretty easily. All right, very oh, nice. I guess. Adam, do you have any good bets? I do, and and I really like Dave's bets, but my my favorite one of, of the – the Super Bowl this year is I love Travis Kelsey to score a touchdown, man. It's it's plus money, and I think that's an easy one to take. Um, I also really like for some like I'm looking at it and I'm going, man, that's kind of low. Brock Purdy's rushing yards is like twelve and a half. I like the over on that one. It's a good one. So I'm only gonna go two because I didn't look really too hard into it. But like I said, I I love Travis Kelsey to score uh, on FanDuel. I believe it's plus a hundred. It's probably 
pretty close to that on other betting sites as well. Uh, and I like uh, Brock Purdy over the rushing yards there. Okay, fair enough. Jay, do you have any bets for us or not? <clears throat> no. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, simple. Uh, he's I'll, a, he's I'll, a man of simple taste. Yeah. <laughs> and don't don't confuse this with uh, me um, picking this team to win yet because this isn't my pick. And I don't even know what the line is. Adam, maybe you can try to Google it real quick about what the Super Bowl MVP odds for this player. And that player would be Barack Purdy. And the reason I want Brock Purdy to win the Super Bowl MVP? Well, the Super Bowl MVP is because of them forcing this narrative down our throats and everybody making such a big deal about him. I think he's they're going to make him have a good game. They're going to scheme him to be throwing wide open passes. They're going to scheme him to get three, four touchdowns and be Super Bowl MVP. And if it's got good odds, I'm taking that bet because it just feels I got like it right here. What are the odds? On FanDuel, it is plus two ten for plus Brock 230. Purdy to win. That's great. Like win the, the uh, Super Bowl MVP. So who's the best odds, Christian or is Pat? Patrick Mahomes at 150. Pat, Christian okay. McCaffrey okay. is plus 450. Okay. I'm Tra- going Travis to Travis Kelsey. Think- you ready for this one? This is wild. Plus 1400. That, see, that's a good bet, too, because Travis Taylor's Kelsey. Kelsey. Those are my two picks right there. Whoever you think is going to win on e- either side, Travis Kelsey or Brock Purdy, take those as a Super Bowl MVP because I just feel with these narratives, those are the two people involved in the narrative. Patrick Mahomes isn't involved in the narrative. It's Taylor yep. Swift in the narrative, and it's Brock Purdy. So if you think the Chiefs are going to win, Go ahead and, and play play um, t- uh, Taylor Swift. Yep, go ahead and play Taylor Swift. I think the Chiefs going to win. Um, <laughs> uh, go ahead and play Travis Kelsey. If you think um, the, the, the Niners are going to win, go ahead and play Purdy because I just have a feeling if the Niners win this game, they are going to force Brock Purdy to throw like 40 times and get four touchdowns just so they can be like, see? see, he's good. He's good. Do you see how good he is? He threw to the wide open receiver for the touchdown. He's good. Like, and I, just, <laughs> I feel like they're gonna, like make that happen. And uh, it's a good bet that Kelsey shows up, wins the Super Bowl, proposes to Taylor Swift, and retires. I mean, so so narrative driven storylines. Those are your best bets. Those are Dave and and Chaz and Adams and Jay's kind of stone cold locks of the week. Minus Jay, who <clears> just. No, uh, so I'm no. here for support. So. I support you guys in your picks. Yeah. Jay, kind of. Oh, thanks, dude. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks, dude. That's what we need in our gambling addiction. Jay's, yeah. Jay's going to end up with the most money at the end of this <laughs> shit. Watch it. Watch it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, because he doesn't put it out there yeah, for any, uh, any you know, site to take yeah. uh, like we do. I'll it's tell you what. Do you, guys, do you guys bet the coin flip at all? Well, that's what I was going to say. I mean, what about some of these wild I was going to say coin flip. prop bets. I know people love betting the coin flip, but here's the thing with the coin flip for me, right? I never bet the fucking coin flip because it's literally a 50-50. You have no control over that. That takes literally, no thought. Yeah. Literally. literally a 50-50. And I'll tell you what, if I lose that first bet before the game even fucking starts, I am just so full of rage that the I, I'm just so pissed off for the entire first quarter losing that first bet on a freaking coin toss. You do realize that those are literally the best odds possible is 50 50 in any kind of bet. Like, I mean, and it's I just like, like I, I don't think it's the odds. I think it's the fact that I have lost money before the game started. <laughs> like, <laughs> it, it just doesn't sit right with me. That's fair, dude. That's Here is fair. An inter- here's an interesting couple of uh, prop bets I heard today. Um, there is a bet out there. I don't remember where, but I'm sure we can find it. Of, who scores the first touchdown? And it goes by jersey number. And the line is set at 22 and a half. So you can take the jersey number of 22 and under or 23 and up. That's Who swift. Those scores? are, those are wow. swift bets. Those are yeah, cool bets. Yeah, 100%. You would think the 23 always... and up. Well, if you think about it, 23 and up. You get Christian. You get, um, you know, um, Kelsey. You get whatever receivers, but 22 and under, you get Pacheco, Ayuk, you get um, Patrick Mahomes running, Mahomes. you get Purdy running, you get um, Debo Samuel. Yep. So, I mean, 
That's a good line for it to be at. Dustin. Yeah, here's my favorite one. I love the bets for the over under on the national anthem. Yes. This year, <laughs> uh, as we know, re- I already know country it. music legend. Yep. Reba McIntyre. Oh, not 90 Eric. And a half, 90 and a half seconds this year, over under. Over under. So, what do you Reba think? Reba has been around for a long time. Okay. She knows she's been singing the national anthem at, at, at just, uh, just about anything you can imagine. Um, so I, it's tough to say because 90 seconds is a very low number, I think. But because of her being around for so long, I think she's got it dialed in. I think it goes under, but not by much. I, I'm with and you. She- and here, and here, and here's why, real quick. The stat that I heard since they started timing it, it's um, the over has hit eight times and the under has hit seven times. I for, I forget the year that they said they started timing the national anthem for that prop bet, but either way, I think I'm thinking under this year. We'll see. So I agree. It's under because Reba she ain't gonna impress anybody. She's a legend. Everybody, no, she's already. Her. Everybody. She doesn't got to be up there like, oh, say, can you? She's going to get up there. She's going to be like, hey, y'all. I'm surprise. Reba. Chaz is actually going to be there singing the national anthem. Like, hey, yeah, y'all. Surprise this is guest. McIntyre. Say, Reba McIntyre. Oh, say, can you see? She's going to get right through it and be done with it. I'm taking the number on that. Yep. That is Chaz's Stone Cold Lock of the Week. Reba McIntyre. Under ninety seconds, lock it in, boy. You can say her name. She she won't she won't sue us. <laughs> so there's some of the hopefully. fun fun no, prop hopefully. bets. And stuff. But now, boys, it's time for your official picks, and we're going to start with the man, the myth, the legend himself, Jay Coleman. Jay Coleman, who is Super Bowl winner and Super Bowl MVP? Um, Forty Niners and Brock Purdy. For sure. Barack Purdy. Wow. Uh, Dave, who is wow. champion and Super Bowl MVP? KC and Mahomes. KC and Mahomes. Adam, I pose the same question to you. <sighs> that is tough, man. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. And the reason I'm picking the 49ers is because the Chiefs beat them last time. And uh, I'm going with Jay on this one. I'm going 49ers and Brock Purdy is going to be the Super Bowl MVP. Well, folks, it is a split decision here because your boy Chaz is going with Kansas City Chiefs and Travis Kelsey so he can propose to Taylor Swift. So the NFL can be like, look at Taylor. Look how good this is. Oh, look, your boyfriend won. Oh, my God. Maybe you should play. (laughs) Maybe you should sing the national anthem next year. Maybe you can do the halftime show. Oh, my God. Yeah. So Kansas City Chiefs and your boy Travis Kelsey will be the MVP. So that is your well, official. You know, you know, if no, they I'm going to retire, though, because if he retires, win, their narrative's gone because they can't show Taylor right. Swift a million fucking times. Right. And that, that's what I was just going to say. And you know, the reason they win the Super Bowl is going to be Taylor Swift, obviously, because now that she brought in a whole, whole, you know, new fan base to the NFL, that they have to impress them. So if you don't think she is playing. The halftime show of the Super Bowl next year. Y'all are crazy. Crazy. <laughs> she is playing the halftime show of the Super Bowl next year. 100%. Whether her boyfriend retires or not, she's going to, She. it's just, there's no doubt about it in my mind. And they're going to pay her more than like every quarterback combined to do it. No artist <laughs> gets paid to do the halftime show. Yeah, well, she's going to be the first. <laughs> they're they're going to figure it out. Okay, so there is your official predictions but um before we get into uh before we get into our uh surprise uh you know function that we're dropping on you guys for the week um let's do a little quick wrestling talk i don't know how plugged in uh you two are uh adam and uh dave but me and jay are pretty plugged in jay what's with all this crazy nonsense about wrestlemania going on why don't you give us a quick breakdown uh the rock came back uh, on a surprise uh, little press conference thing last night, and uh, and uh, kind of got a little attitude era esque with some violence with the Rock. Really? Yeah, that and is, dude. So let's take it back. Let's take it back. That's, that's uh, the best era. Jay 
who is the winner of the Royal Rumble? Uh, Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes wins the Royal Rumble two years in a row. So what happens when you win the Royal Rumble? What do you, you win? You get the right to choose who you're going to wrestle a main event in WrestleMania. Okay, so Cody Rhodes wins the Royal Rumble. And at the end of the Royal Rumble, he points to Roman Reigns. And you can see him saying, I want you. I want you. The next night on Raw, Cody Reigns is in the, or, or a couple. No, the next night on Raw, he, he Cody says. Cody Reigns, he, nice. The, the next night around, he says he wants uh, Roman Reigns. But the following uh, couple days later on SmackDown, all of a sudden, The Rock shows up and Cody Rhodes says, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to let you fight uh, Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. The Rock fight Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. For all you that don't know, Roman Reigns and The Rock are cousins. And The Rock is one of the biggest wrestlers of all time. And Roman Reigns has been the champion for nearly four years. So the wrestling community is really upset and booing and hashtagging. We want Cody and the other half of the people are hashtagging. We want Rocky. And it's like all this stuff. And, uh, you know, all these wrestling fans really think their opinion matters when this is exactly what WWE wants. They want you (laughs) to love it or hate it. They want you to cheer and boo. Everyone's going to act like WWE doesn't know what they're doing when they know exactly what the fuck they're doing. Because five days after that, Jay mentions there's this uh, press conference and The Rock is acting like a dick and Cody Rhodes basically says, nah, bro, it don't work like that. I won the Royal Rumble. I'm challenging Roman Reigns. And fucking Rock literally bitch slaps the shit out of Cody Rhodes. I'm talking like Chris Rock, Will Smith style, like right on right on the stage of press conference and we'll get to something about that i want to talk about that afterwards Len, so I've now fly and all kinds of others yeah. they were doing a lot of bleeping yeah everything and then you get backstage and triple h is doing an interview and the rock comes up to triple h and he says he says like you tell your boy right there to keep my family's name don't talk about my fucking family or i will slap the teeth out of his fucking mouth and walks away <laughs> and i was just like wow did they swear like they had everyone eating out of their Damn. hands first minute like so for people to think that like because they booed wwe changed their mind no this was the plan the whole time because <laughs> why would they have cody on monday say he's going after roman for on them friday say no it's going to be the rock no 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 this is the exact like outcome they were wanting now Nobody knows. So as of now, your main event of WrestleMania is Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes. There ain't no way The Rock's not involved somehow in this. Oh, yeah, for sure. So it's really exciting. So you guys aren't paying attention, but how crazy does that sound? I am not. It sounds like it's going to be a triple threat match at WrestleMania is what it sounds like. The Rock's going to be the guest referee, bro. Some people are saying that that Triple H is going to be the guest referee. Okay. Okay. And then... They're just going to make it a triple threat match anyway. It's just wild and it's interesting, but here's my. Well, they biggest, always do. Here's my biggest takeaway from everything, and I, you know, like everyone's been saying, like the NFL is, is scripted. For the past few years, I've been saying that UFC is scripted, and, and let me let me let me conjure this for you guys now. Why would a so you just upset a lot of people? We're so a fucking legit, <laughs> a legit fighting company, a legit fighting company, team up with a well-known fake fighting company. You, I'm doing air quotes, guys. Um, and then this fake fighting company puts on a a a press conference. That literally looks like every other UFC fucking press conference. There's some dude up there wearing a George Washington jacket, and they're standing in each other's face, and oh, the stop, 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 break them up, break them up, break them up. Every fucking UFC press conference is like that. And WWE just goes and does the same damn thing, makes, and then I just connecting dots like. I and need now Joe Rogan though. They're in bed together. Like it's just wild. So yeah, you heard me, folks. UFC, your script. I'm, I, 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 maybe not the outcomes, but everything else. But everything else. I have no further comments. That's what I'm saying. And if any people think that, like, uh, any uh, of that's that Chad, is, that's Chaz, 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 Chaz next week. And let me get into that a little more fighting, fighting talk. If any of you people that think like any of these Jake Paul or Logan Paul fights are real, 
and they're not fucking planned out and scripted. Let me let me just just remind you that Logan Paul in his first ever boxing match went the distance with Floyd Mayweather Jr. pound for pound, quite possibly the greatest boxer of all time. Well, Logan, Logan Paul went controversy. Logan Paul went the distance, and you're telling me that Jake Paul doesn't handpick his 72 year old boxing opponents, and like is just those guys are all about money, money. There's, how about, there's a little con. There's a little about, controversy on that Logan how Paul big, Floyd right, Mayweather how, fight. How about the big? Uh, how about the big? Um, uh, Tyson Fury, Francis Nagano fight. The best boxer in the last decade. The best UFC heavyweight in the past decade. Go pound for pound. And it's in a non-sanctioned, non-title match in a different country that has no boxing and govern rules. <laughs> and Tyson Fury wins by a decision. Like, come on, people. Everything. Like, we were just talking about the NFL. I'm really starting to lose hope in any sport. <laughs> whatsoever now there is no way if you want to say that to, that nagano can knock out uh fury sure he could he absolutely could watch that fight fury wasn't trying he wasn't doing anything and, and the simple fact that logan paul in his first boxing match goes the distance with like the greatest boxer of the past 20 years is absurd to me so i'm starting to doubt the legitimateness of ufc too now teaming up with wwe and if the nfl can be narrative drifted driven and possibly scripted why couldn't two fighters and a referee be so i mean i get it but i don't know it's remember tough. guys you, up, up until 1989 wrestling was real it was real until it wasn't wrestling was real for 100 years until vince mcmahon said you know since we're uh sport we have to pay this sport tax if we come out as entertainment we don't have to pay that sport tax anymore and then it came out as scripted so wrestling was real for 100 years to people till uh till it wasn't so i'm just saying don't put it past people <laughs> don't put it past people sorry ufc guys come at me my name is your boy chaz that might have been the hottest take we've ever had that's, Jazz's that's, rock record review. That might, be, that might that was, be the hottest take that's going to be on the internet. That was spicy. Oh, tomorrow. Yeah. Tonight. I love it. And you know what? Because of my hot take, I am just going to take the first overall pick in this draft because I said so. Because it's my that's hot take. So we're, yep. That's Tell us why we're, we're doing a draft, Jazz. We're going me. We're going in order of appearance. We're going to go me. We're going to go Jay. We're going to go Adam. And Dave, you're bringing up the rear. All right, we're going to have order of appearance on the on this program. So, All right. If you guys are wondering what the hell we're even talking about at home, we are going to draft. We are going to become a draft show. We're going to try to do more <laughs> content. We're going to, <laughs> we're going to become a draft show. <laughs> we're, going to do, we're going to start doing more fun content in the offseason. We're starting out this off by drafting. Since we're talking about the superb owl, remember, you can't say Super Bowl. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Did I say that? You can't say Super Bowl. All right, so we are going to be drafting the greatest <laughs> super champions of all time. So all you have to do is be one of the 57 teams to win the Super Bowl. And um, you just you draft who you think the best team is. We're going to go out four rounds. Maybe we'll go five, but I'll just say four rounds to start. Um, you, If you want to be a dick and pick, like, um, I don't know, the, the, the um, 92 – Cowboys and the 93 Cowboys and the 94. Fine. If you want to be stupid like that, do it. <laughs> That's There's no rules. You can do that if you'd like. Okay? So we are going to pick the greatest Super Bowl t- winning team. Oh, shit. Superb Owl teams of all time. And uh, I'm going to start. And this is going to be controversy. Uh-oh. Sound the controversy alarm. Because uh, people are going to be like, what? They're not one of the greatest teams ever. And I beg to differ. I am throwing out a team that had the, I believe, the most sacks the year they won the Super Bowl. A top three defense that won the Super Bowl. They had an amazing offense. They are throwing out on offense. Ready for this? Uh, They're throwing out a Hall of Fame tight end. A Hall of Fame wide receiver. A Hall of Fame possible GOAT 
quarterback. You are talking about a Hall of Fame, also a couple guys on the defensive line. But when we're talking about offense, they're throwing out these gems. At running back, you got Leonard Fournette. At tight end, you got Rob Gunkowski. Your, your you. wide receivers are Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, and your quarterback is the GOAT. I think one of the greatest teams in NFL history and the greatest Super Bowl champion of all time is that 2019-2020 Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You, so you guys want to see how I prepared? You guys want to see how they I prepared? They were on my list draft? too, so. <laughs> that's the only that's the only team that I wrote down. <laughs> Yes, I didn't think you guys would. Think you had him on your list too, Jay. What about you, David? Did you think of him as one of the greatest? Uh, I, I yeah, no, I thought of him. You you know okay. you know I love me some Mike Evans. I'm the I'm the biggest Mike Evans fan. Yeah, so that oh, that's yeah. My, that's my pick. I think the they are the greatest team that ever won the Super Bowl, and that's why. So I'm happy to have them. All right, Jay, what you got? I like it. Um, I'm going with the 1988 49ers. Okay, throw me some names out there. Obviously, Joe Montana. Yeah, Joe Montana. Um, Jerry Rice. Yep. Top defense there. They probably uh, – Tom Rathman was probably their I running think, back then. I think J.J. Stokes might have been on the receiving core too. Ronnie Lott. Ronnie Lott, yep. <clears throat> 1988-Niners. Okay, very, very good choice. All, All right, right. Adam. I'm up. And uh, I am I'm sticking with the 49ers, and I'm taking oh, you the son 1995. Of a bitch. Oh, good choice. 19, uh, uh, yep. uh, San Francisco 49ers. I'm going oh, with, you know Steve Young, Jerry Rice again. Uh, Derek uh, Derek Loville was a running back at the time. Um, what a what a great great Deion team. Deion Sanders, I believe, right? Deion. Yep. Um, yep. Yep. yep exactly. Sanders. So. Very good choice. I love that the one. 1995 San Francisco 49ers. Well, that's a great, great, absolute great choice. All right, Dave, what you got? Uh, probably going to be an unpopular opinion, but I'm going to go with uh, a little Super Bowl 42. I'm going to take the uh, the New York Giants, Mr. Eli Manning, the incredible helmet catch to dethrone uh, Mr. Tom Brady from winning uh, like third Super Bowl. No. Was it 07 or 08? Oh seven, oh eight. That was oh yeah, it's oh eight, oh eight. Very oh eight. eight. Classical Burris. Right. Right. I mean, I just you know, I I just like I like that they went into that game as such an underdog, just like an yeah. absolute like the probably one of the biggest underdogs in Super Bowl history, and they came out and and don't get me wrong, that catch everybody thinks that was a miraculous catch. I think that catch was actually kind of some lucky bullshit, but whatever. They, they kind of, pull, they kind of, yeah. I, I mean, I know everybody likes to say it's the most miraculous catch of Super Bowl yeah. history. I actually think it's some lucky bullshit. But either way, they went into there and they came out with a win against the goat. And uh, yeah, go Eli. Okay, all right, like Dave. Go ahead. Round two. What you got? All right, uh, so we're gonna go the very next year. Actually, I'm gonna jump into a little a Super Bowl 43, uh, and this one in 2009 actually means a lot to me because it was one of the very first Super Bowls that I remember like avidly watching, um, be- being old enough to like really that you know like start playing fantasy football, really get into the season and shit like that. Um, and this catch from Santonio Holmes. Uh, yep. And the Pittsburgh Steelers was actually a miraculous catch, and I think one of the greatest Hell catches yeah, in uh, Super Bowl history. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with That's the awesome. 2009 Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, Mr. Santonio Holmes with with the true greatest catch in Super Bowl history. <laughs> Very nice. I like, I like it. it. I like it. I like it. Right, what you got? I like it a lot. <clears throat> so I am gonna go a little uh, a little crazy here, but it's. Uh, <laughs> It's uh, something that I like here. I'm actually taking the 2022 LA Rams. And the reason being is because I love me some Matt Stafford. Okay. Matt Stafford, I feel, has been a very underrated quarterback for a long time. Being, you know, being in Detroit and just losing game after game, he had one of the greatest receivers of all time. And and Calvin Johnson just making plays, throwing 5,000 yards, I think. And like, I don't know, four seasons or something with Detroit, which was crazy. But uh he he had Cooper Cup and and that defense was was really good. Bobby Wagner and, and um Aaron Donald on there getting him a ring and I love me some Matt Stafford. I really do. You do have a big man. 20, 
I do have a fantasy crush on Matt Stafford. I'm totally okay with him on my fantasy team, even if he's not my <laughs> starter for half the season. I'm I'm taking Matt Stafford. Very but nice. I love it. Yeah. All right, Jay, what, what you got? Uh, I'm gonna take the 2006 uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh, he's covering for his wife right now. Oh no, that's good. Why we why we why we liking the Steelers? <laughs> Big Ben, uh, James Harrison, Willie Parker, right? Yeah, Willie Parker. Nice. Uh, that's a good pick. Pines Ward. Yep, Pines Ward. Probably Santonio San Holmes. Yep, right? he was on the team. Yep. Probably the no, probably the number one defense. I'm just assuming. <laughs> probably. Probably. But mo- most likely, yeah. <laughs> you know, just just knowing. Uh, <laughs> okay. Very well. Okay. We are going to go with um, a team that uh, again. I- I'm I'm just throwing out. Uh, uh, a guess that they probably had the number one defense. They probably had the number one kicker. They probably had the number one quarterback. They probably had the number one kick returners. Um, they probably had the greatest pass catcher in the game who happened to be uh, a tight end. And we are throwing a team that threw out people there on defense, such as Malcolm Butler, Patrick Chung, Devin McCourty, Darrell Revis, Logan Ryan. We're doing a team that also threw out Dante Hightower, Chris Jones, Chandler Jones, Vince Wilfork, a team that threw out Rob Gronkowski, Julian Edelman, Danny Amadola, Garrett Blunt, J- Shane Vereen, James White, but of course the GOAT, Tom Brady, and a team that came back from 28 to 3 in the Super Bowl. To win, and we're going with the 24, 2014, 2015 New England Patriots. Like that team defied all odds to get there and divide all odds in the Super Bowl. And anytime you got Tom Brady to Rob Gronkowski, I just like it. So 24, 2015 New England Patriots. Go ahead, shit on me. Uh, that was on my list too. Poor Matty Ice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had that one on my list too. And and my my reason was just because Julian Edelman made a fucking circus catch mm-hmm. on okay. on one of those plays on one of those drives to to bring him back. Great pick. Wow, I'm excited. Okay, so my next pick is another team that I know had the number one defense in the NFL. They also had a the possible greatest running back of all time on their team. And I know I make fun of like, oh, run the ball and play defense, but this is an older team, guys. So, of course, that's what they're doing. They're throwing out people on their defense, names you might have heard of, such as Leslie Frazier, I'm just saying that to uh, trigger all the Bills fans. But they also had Mike Singletary, Wilbur Marshall, Dan Hampton, Richard Dent, Steve McMichael, William the Refrigerator Perry, Willie Galt at wide receiver, possibly the GOAT of all time at Walter Payton, and uh, Jim McMahon at quarterback. They went 15-1 and one and won the Super Bowl. And how could you go wrong with the 85 Chicago Bears, guys? Let's they were on my list. The good pick, yeah. dude. Yeah. Oh, and also, sure. Ron Rivera was a linebacker for them too. So, um, and Jeff Fisher was on their team as a uh, on the re- injured reserve. Interesting. So I'm just looking here. I that actually on that team that uh, that 85 Bears team. Jeff Fisher, Mike Singletary, Ron Rivera, um, Leslie Frazier. Those guys all became head coaches of the NFL. <laughs> Interesting. I just noticed that. All right. So uh, we're moving back on to Jay. Uh, 2003 Bucks. They stomped all over hey, Oakland. Don't say it. Don't say it. Brad Johnson, <laughs> Mike Pittman, Mike Allstott. Michael Pitt Sr. Yep, Sr. <laughs> Michael Pitt Sr. And Derek Brooks, James Hardy, um, uh, uh, the the Keyshawn uh, Johnson, Keyshawn Johnson. Johnson, hell yeah, great, great team. You can't go wrong with that team, absolutely. Even though I'm a Raiders fan, that was a better team <laughs> by far. Uh, very good, very good. All right, we're doing well here. Maybe we'll go five rounds. We're already almost three rounds deep. Adam, what you got? Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Uh, I hate, hate to do this. Uh-oh. No, he doesn't. Don't, don't do it. 
I am taking a Dallas Cowboy from the early nineties. <laughs> I am going to change my pick right now. <laughs> um, I am actually going to. I am no. actually going to take. Um, the 2007 Indianapolis Colts. Okay. Uh, and I love me some Peyton Manning. I, I, Reggie Wayne was on that team. Dallas Clark, I think, was still their tight end. Um, if I remember Harrison correctly, probably. I believe it was uh, – I don't know if Harrison was still there or not. They probably had Dwight uh, Freeney, Robert Mathis. But, Dwight uh, Freeney, yep, yeah, Robert Mathis. Um, trying to think of who their running back was. Joseph Adai, I want to say probably. it was Joseph Adai, I think, yeah. Homie, I'm what a great team that was, and oh, yeah, Peyton Manning it was just one of the best to ever do it. So, I mean, 2007 Colts. You're you're triggering Jay, by the way. He was a Bears fan then. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jay. Sorry, right. Jay. For the record, had a, had a Rex Grossman jersey, guys. So feel free to roast him. <laughs> sure did. Do you, right. do you still have it? Is the real question. No. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Jay had a Rex Grossman jersey, and he was a Bears fan. He still kind of is, but he doesn't like to admit it. All right, Dave. What is your next two picks here? All right. Uh, we're going to go way, way back. Well, not way, way back, but way, way back. From, yeah, we're going to go back to my childhood. We're going to go way, way back uh, for, for what most people would be. All the way to 1998. Uh, and we were going to go uh, Super Bowl 33 with the Denver Broncos. I mean, how can you go wrong? Elway versus Favre. That's all I got to say. Terrell, Terrell Davis. Or, yeah, Terrell, Terrell Davis. That's a- Terrell Davis. I mean, Great just thing, like. Yeah. Papa, yeah. Papa McCaffrey. Papa McCaffrey. That that Super Bowl was hyped. I remember that Super Bowl being hype. Uh, Elway, Elway versus Favre. It was like the big the knockout yep. heavy hitter knockout fight, yep. and uh, they delivered. They put up, you know, they put fifty five points on the board. Great, yep. great Super Bowl. Oh, they had a great offense. I mean, Elway getting his first ring, but you still had Papa McCaffrey, Rod Smith. I believe they had Shannon Sharp too. Like they they were they were on fire, man. Yeah, great. that that was a good team. And then uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna go uh, and jump super far ahead. It's super Bowl forty nine. I got it. which which year is that? I don't even know what we're on now. <laughs> mm. It'll be what ten years ago, right? No, eleven years. No, nine. Years eleven ago. years ago, Pats. Pats versus the Seahawks. What that's year was what that? I took. I took them. Oh, uh, that's the one that. Uh... I took them. Can't have them. No, no, I'm. You're right. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, I took. That, no, I you took, took that against. Yeah. You took it against the Falcons. Yep. Yeah. yeah, the Seattle yep. game was. Uh, was the year's sorry. Seattle game? It was uh, New England Patriots versus Seattle Seahawks, February first, twenty fifteen. Two thousand. Yeah, two thousand fifteen. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. That, and I'm just taking that matchup just because you know that I fucking hate Russell Wilson, and that was just like the, <laughs> the epitome of Russell Wilson being fucking Russell Wilson. So I'm glad you lost that shit, bro. Okay, and I need to clarify. I said the wrong year. I took the actual 2016 slash 17 Patriots. So that's what confused yes. me. That's I said what, yeah, the wrong that, year. I was a little confused. I, I took 16 slash 17 Patriots. You took uh, uh, 14 slash 15 Patriots. Yes. Yeah. My. That's, an, that's that's not so much how a uh, 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 praise of the Patriots as much as just a shit on Russell Wilson. Fuck you, bro. Unlimited. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that was the, uh, what did I say? The 14, 15 pats, right? Yep. Yeah. 14, 15. That's so what sucks. I'm like gonna... this, that year switch that confuses me. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Yeah, so technically, the Super Bowl is, it's the, the yeah, year you know the years, but it's the year that the Super Bowl is played in is what they yeah. count. So, for for so, everybody at home, just real quick, I just want everybody to know that I fucked this up. I everybody was going years, and I went Super Bowl number. So I'm sorry for the confusion. Either way, it's <laughs> I, was not, I was not prepared. That's I okay. was not. I was not prepared. That's okay. For this. We forgive you for it. I appreciate so, that. Um. Yeah. So I I'm gonna have to do it because it's an absolutely absolutely fantastic roster. And I am taking, and they fucking beat down the Bills too. I'm taking the 1993 Cowboys. I got to do it. I, I just, I upset every Buffalo fan in in the oh, fucking history yeah. of the Bills. Fuck you, Buffalo Bills fans. Fuck but, you, Bills I mean, Mafia. Your team sucks and couldn't beat them. Couldn't I win mean, a Super Bowl in four years, bro. That's not your fault, Adam. That's not your fault. Troy Aikman, Emmett Smith, Michael Irving. Like, oh my God. Give me, give me that team all, and they beat the shit out of the Bills, fifty-two <laughs> to seventeen or whatever it was, and just what, 
what a time to be a Cowboys fan in the early nineties. Like, like, you know Damn. what? Like, like I Jay's hate it. Boy. I hate it. And it hurts me still to this day, obviously, but can't, you got to give it up to them. And they came prepared. They beat the hell out of us and, and we deserve to lose that game. Like Jay's boy, Toby but, Keith says, should have been a cowboy. Should have been. <laughs> should have been. <laughs> like how I tied that in, Jay? 19, I like that. I see it. He, he, he loves it. That's how about that? Actually, he is That's actually it. smiling on the inside. You can't see it, though. Yeah, no, absolutely not. All right, Jay, That's what funny. is your fucking host with the most, bro? Well, wow. What is your uh, fourth round pick? And we're going five rounds. I said so. Uh, I'm taking sure. uh, 1983 Washington Redskins. What? You're going John Riggins on me? What? Did you just say the R word? Yeah, I did. It was okay, okay. then. It was okay in 1983. So you went the 1983 <laughs> red. Yeah. 27 okay. 17 over the, the Dolphins. <laughs> yep. Nice. And that was, uh, that would have been, uh, what, uh, Dan Marino's rookie year, I think. And, uh, or maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was just before, but was no. that the John Riggins year? Uh, David Woodley was the Miami QB, and it was just before then. Yeah, that was David Woodley. But was this the John Riggins year, just running over everybody? Probably. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love watching those old school clips of uh, John Riggins because he embodied me. I'm a just a big, bumbly kind of fat white guy, and that's what he was. I was never the 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 the, the swift, fast like guy. He was a big, bumbly, looked like an offensive lineman running the ball, and I identified with that. So, John Riggins, that's a that's a good one. All right, or John Riggins, the 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 uh, the red of nineteen eighty three. So, um, <laughs> all right, guys, we are going with another somewhat modern team, a team that had great defense, great. Um, Good, great receivers, great quarterback play on a downswing, and decent running back play. But this is a team that threw out there players like Akib Talib, TJ Ward, Danny Trevathan, Demarcus Ware, a menace known as, as Von Miller, Shaq Barrett, Vernon Davis, Emmanuel Sanders, Demarius Thomas and Mr. Five had himself Peyton Manning. We are going with the 2015 Denver Broncos. What an underrated, list. what an underrated team. The 15, 16 Broncos were, um, Peyton Manning was coming down in his career, you know, but still awesome. And, 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 and made a star out of Von Miller so much that he's robbing the Buffalo bills blind, uh, eight years later, but still made a monster out of him. I I heard, I heard a little, uh, hiss out of you, Dave. What what, what was that? That was a sad super bowl for me. I love Peyton Manning and just what, like just watching him kind of struggle through that game was like, Oh, you know, you just you just you just wanted it to be over and you wanted him to win cuz you like him, he's such a nice guy, but he was just out there fucking throwing ducks and you're like, "Oh no." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you know, if there's anybody that has bad. no no arm that I want out there with no arm, it's Peyton Manning. Yeah. <laughs> ah. So so that's, that's it. Fair. All right. And like I told you, we're going into a uh a, a third round here and or fifth round here. So we all get five, the 20 teams get picked up <laughs> something a little more uh, modern. Um, well, actually it's actually older than Peyton Manning, but still you're going to a team that uh, made it happen with an aging team and a little bit of overratedness, I think at certain positions, but I digress. This team came into the season throwing out an, awesome best in the league almost defense and a up and coming quarterback and an up and coming running back and um, that's about it and they came out with also (laughs) one of the good kickers in the league too and you've got a team that's throwing out there names like this on defense and your secondary you have Bernard Pollard, Jimmy Smith and now it's going to give it away Ed Reed. You've got these linebackers of Courtney Upshaw, Terrell Suggs, Ray Lewis. You got you got offensive linemen on there like Bryant McKinney and Michael Orr, the blind side. Throwing out kind of basic uh, wide receivers like Anquan Bolden and Torrey Smith, but you got good uh, 
a tight end play and Dennis Pitta. You got a young Ray Rice and Joe Flacco, and I am doing the 2012-2013 Baltimore Ravens, and I thought that was one of the best teams of all time. Huh? You suck. That's a good pick. I thought about it. Yeah, that's my, that, that was, was on my, my list too. Thought about you it. Suck. Yeah. You suck. <laughs> all right, Jay. So, what you got for your final pick? Uh, <clears throat> the uh, 2014 uh, uh, CL Seahawks. Oh, you get, Ooh, we went, 43 oh, to dangerous. eight over the Broncos. Yeah. You got when Russell Wilson was actually somewhat decent, I guess. Percy Harvin, Marshawn Lynch, um, Cam Chancellor, Bobby Wagner, Earl Dave Thomas. Dave's about to throw up. <laughs> Dave, oh, Dave just, <laughs> you said Russell Wilson's right. name again. Oh. He's just <laughs> Mar- Marshawn Lynch makes it okay. <laughs> <laughs> All Steven right, Hushko, the ex Bill, was on that team. We uh, cool. we're showing our age because we're picking a lot more modern teams. But these teams are great, <laughs> right? Like they really are. Yeah. All I'm right. not saying that the old teams aren't bad, but or aren't great either, but because they were. But what's your last? Um, yeah, and I'm going even more modern than that, man. And and in this simple fact that I just love watching Tom Brady get beat down, and he didn't really get <laughs> beat down. But I'm going with the 2008, 17, 18 Philadelphia Eagles with Nick Foles at quarterback. Uh. They draft this young kid, Carson Wentz, gets hurt. Nick Foles comes in, saves the season, wins the Super Bowl. They run a Philly special, and, and it's just what a what a team of just I don't. Look, I mean, there's not great. really any big names on there, but I, I want mean, to thank Adam for losing Nick the draft. Foles, Elshon Jeffrey, I don't care. They beat Tom Brady. I don't give a shit. That's so did Eli Manning. But that's uh, all I want, who, dude. Who the hell was their running back? Jay Ajayi. Was that who their running back? Yeah, yeah I think so. It didn't matter. They put up forty-one points. Yeah. <laughs> Forty-four. Big Dick Nick. Big dick, yeah, dick. Okay, fair enough. Fucking um, oh yeah, 40, 41 to thirty three, dude. They beat they beat Tom Brady, and anytime Tom Brady loses, I'm here for it. Okay, all right. Thank you for losing. Even though the he's the best to ever, do it. Don't care. Yeah, go ahead. Anybody <laughs> else can win. Don't care. I don't care. Dave, you can say it all you want. I don't care. What is your final pick of the draft? <laughs> <laughs> fucking heated. We need to do this every fucking week, boys. Every fucking week we do this. Okay. All right. Please, please. All right. Uh, rounding off the draft here. Um, I think we're probably gonna catch a lot of heat if one if one of us does not put this team on our list. So I'm gonna go all the way back to the 2000 era. Uh, we're gonna go with the then St. Louis Rams uh taking the victory 23. Uh, 16 over the Tennessee Titans, the greatest show on turf. Um, little, little, yeah, I mean, you, you, I'm not the biggest Kurt Warner fan, but like, eh, undrafted. I love Kurt Warner. You do love Kurt Warner. I, I mean, I'm Kurt. not the biggest fan. I don't hate him, but like, Bro, but you're talking yeah, about this he, team. Like this, this team should have been my pick over the Ravens. I went the Ravens instead. But you're talking Kurt Warner, Marshall Falk, Tory Holt, Isaac oh, Holt. Bruce. Oh, dude, yeah. I, Dude, on defense, they had London Fletcher. They had Adam Archuleta. They, they had everything, man. That team was great. That, that was, was the a, great. such a solid team, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd, lo- I'd love yeah. me some Tory Holt, too. I've, right. I've always been a Tory Holt yeah. fan, so had great. to do it. I feel like we ca- we'd catch some slack if we didn't put the greatest show on turf on the list. All right, guys. Well, for me, that in my my top my uh, five draft of the greatest Super Bowl winning teams of all time is the 2019 Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the 20 what did I say 16 New England Patriots, the 85 Bears, the 2015 Denver Broncos, and the 2012 slash 13 Baltimore Ravens. Jay, you got yours written down? No, but uh. <clears throat> <laughs> got 90, uh, 88 uh, 49ers, I think. The 2005 16. Steelers. Um, Three bucks. Yep. And then Redskins. And then the <laughs> Seattle, <laughs> Seattle Seahawks. The fact that it came in so late was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 in the 14th the, the Washington yeah. team. He lets red go through and then bleeps out skins. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, he's getting canceled anyways. This is his last show, so come oh, some yeah. slack. This he's... is our last show for sure. Uh, Nobody's no, going to hear this shit. We got canceled oh, after the Swifty man. shit. Yeah. Swifty, no, oh, Swifties, God, UFC. 
The Swifties like me. Oh, the UFC yeah. bro, if the UFC bros want to come at me, I'm not afraid of them and their affliction gears and little penises. It's no, fine. the Swifties are still <laughs> going to be mad because we're still upset that the NFL is showing too much Taylor Swift. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. All right, Adam, since you didn't write it down, you have the 95 Niners. Yeah, 95 Niners, 2022 Rams. Uh, I got the 9. Oh, seven. What did I take oh. after the Rams? 07 um, in, uh, Indianapolis Colts, the 93 Dallas Cowboys, and Chaz's favorite pick of the draft, the 2018 Eagles. Oh. Okay. Birds. All right, Dave, and what was your final? Line? I didn't fucking write down a thing, so take it away. <laughs> Fucking! <laughs> you, you didn't. You didn't tell us that we had to write it down. Oh, I you were it down. <laughs> yeah, Chaz so always writes it down. Yeah, he's over there writing yeah, through the whole show, and then he's like, bother. "He's like, oh, did you guys Dave do it?" Got, Dave's got the conquering 07, 08 Giants, the 08, 09 Stillers, the ninety eight, ninety nine Broncos, the fourteen, fifteen Pats, and the ninety nine, two thousand. St. Louis Rams, the greatest show on turf. So what did you guys think of our draft? Let us know who won. Let us know what y'all think about it. And uh, all right, guys. So we're going to come back uh, in a couple of weeks and start doing some different content, some more drafts, some off-season talk. Um, Our next episode, we'll figure out what draft to do like we did here at the end. But we are going to do our accountability show and see. We're going to take back. Our, uh, our, uh, we, I have the list of all of our uh, predictions we made at the beginning of the season. We're going to see who won. Maybe we'll give ourselves a point per prediction who was right and see who won at the end of it, and we could just make fun of each other. So That's going to be rough. That's what Sounds fair. So, yeah. So, um, so ch- check fair. out that. Dave was involved in that, right? Weren't you? Were you running for the I was. I was indeed oh, yeah, involved. Yeah, uh, cool. I think I got one point from Dallas Goddard, and then I'm just going to fuck off on the rest of the show. <laughs> Dave, we're gonna have to see. We're gonna have to see. No, no peeking. We'll check out in a couple weeks. All right, you, all you three gentlemen. Uh, thank you for joining me, Dave. Thank. You. Okay. Yep. There he is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I wasn't for- sure where he was going with that one. Yeah, either. Uh, thank you for- just, I'm out of it. Thank you for I'm joining just, me, Dave. Just insert a clip of Dana White punching you in the face right here to end it. Yeah. <laughs> Little ball. <laughs> Fucking cute ball. All right. <laughs> All right. Jay, thank you for joining yeah, no us. No problem. Adam, yeah, thank you for joining us. Adam, I'll see you national, oh, brother. Yeah. Yes, sir. Let's go. All right. Until then, guys, we'll see you next time. Peace. See you later, boys. Later, guys. Later, boys. The preceding presentation has been brought to you by the Gear Network.